Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here with some tips on mixing heavy guitars. Uh, this is something that a lot of people seem to struggle with. I know I struggled with it for a long time until I finally realized the secret is that there is no secret. Uh, the secret is that you, you really need to work with, with tracks that, that are good at the source. Um, and what I mean by good at the source is, you know, a quality guitar player playing through a really good rig or a not necessarily expensive rig, but a, but a good rig. Um, uh, with proper mic placement, or if you're playing through a plugin and a software emulator, you know, picking a tone that works uh, with the DI that you're tracking. <clears throat> uh, also, I always recommend and I always request if I'm being sent something to mix to, to, to send a DI track. Uh, reason being is that if something isn't working right, if the tone doesn't, if the tone sucks or just doesn't, something's not jiving, I'll always go to reamp it, then use fancy techniques like you know, I don't know, EQ matching or, or crazy boosts and cuts and phase shifting. And, you know, I always prefer to just get the tone right in the first place. Um, even if it's something I'm recording myself, I'll track a DI for two reasons. One, it's a safety net. So if it doesn't work right down the road, I can always go back and reamp it. Rarely happens, but it's, it's good to have. Uh, and also for editing, because if you look here, you know, editing a track right now, these are grouped. This is the top one, the lighter blue is my amp sound and the DI, they're both the same performance. Um, and right underneath that is the DI. Uh, the DI is there really to help me with editing and also, like I said, as a safety net. But uh, if you think about it, it's a lot easier to edit looking at those transients in the DI track versus the blob of the, the heavy track. Uh, you know, heavy guitar tracks or distorted guitar tracks are already compressed. So it's, it's kind of tough to see the, any kind of transient information when you're editing and you'll have to do it by ear and guess and use guesswork and it's a pain in the ass. So yes, so the song that I'm going to play here is a mix I did a little while ago for a band called um, X Dementia. The song is called The Dripping Skull. Um, these guitar tracks were actually recorded at the guitar player's house. Uh, I think he recorded into Logic. The DIs were recorded. Uh, and then I took the DIs at the studio and, and ran them through his Randall Thrasher, which ended up being a really cool amp. I, I dug it. I, I like the mid-range on it. It kind of reminds me of a combination of like a 5150 and a, an 800. So yeah, might be buying one of those. But anyway, okay, so let's take a listen to the track with all the processing that I have on it already. Uh, and then I'm going to go through solo the guitars and take my processing off so we could hear the bare tone. So let's hear it, let's hear it as it is. Okay. My opinion sounds pretty good. I like the tone. It, you know, it's not too saturated. It's not too dry. It fits the thrash death metalness of this mix, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, let's hear the guitars completely bone dry. So now, again, you'll see two guitar tracks per side here, two left, two right. Uh, two of those are DI tracks and they're completely muted. They're not being routed anywhere. They're only there for reference. So the only tracks going on in terms of guitars that you just heard are my two heavy thrasher, the thrasher amp tracks. And they have no processing at all on the tracks themselves, but they're being routed to a guitar submix. So these two tracks are going here to this stereo submix, um, and there's some processing. So I'm just gonna completely bypass that for now. And we're gonna hear the tracks in solo. So the two left and right tracks in solo. <laughs> Okay, so those were the tracks, bone dry with nothing on them. Uh, to me, they already sound pretty good. They're almost mix ready, uh, but they need a little bit of work. And the first thing that I do when I solo out guitar tracks like that while I'm mixing, or at least when I'm at this stage of the mix, uh, is I ask myself, what is standing out to me? What is it lacking? What does it need? And in this case, uh, it just sounds like there's a little bit too much going on in the upper, the upper lower mids. Uh, so the mid range. So around the 700 hertz range, it sounds a little boxy. Nothing crazy, maybe like a dB or a dB and a half needs to be taken out. So let's do that. I'm gonna take the stock Digi EQ here. Um, it doesn't matter what EQ you use, it's just, just cutting frequencies. So before I even get to that, I'm gonna roll off my low end, uh, or at least the super duper lows that you don't need. Everyone has a different opinion about this. I've seen people roll up 
off roll up uh, almost up to 200 hertz uh me doesn't work for metal i like to have some beef in the low in the low end especially if the playing is tight and i can get away with it so let's try i don't know 80 hertz with this one so let's go down 80 hertz 80 cycles okay and also the super duper top like the sizzly sizzly that's going on in the in the you know beyond the frequency range of the meat of the guitar let's take that off so let's let's low pass it now again i've seen people roll you know low pass it super you know 6k 8k i'm gonna go with 12 just because this those amps sounded pretty balanced just as they were so let's hear these guitar tracks with the eq we have on it so far okay one more time so here's with the eq No EQ. I don't know about you, but I can barely hear the difference, which is good, which means you're getting rid of that, of some of that low stuff and, and maybe some of the top and making room for the cymbals and I don't know, the top end of the vocal or, or whatever. Um, and especially with the low end, it gives you more headroom because a lot of those low frequencies that you don't need in instruments that that uh, that that's not fundamentally where they're where they're sitting naturally, uh, it's just going to eat up more headroom for for your whole mix. So in this case, we don't need anything below eighty hertz. It's not really adding anything. We'll cut it out. Uh, now let's get to the the actual tone of the guitar. And like I said, to me, it sounds a little mid heavy, uh, at least in the I don't know seven hundred hertz range. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play that again and. <laughs> To me, that sounds a lot better. Um, the, you know, the one, the one and a half K, two K sound a little uh, smidge shrill. So I kind of took out a dB. So really, all we have here is two dB taken out at at around 750, 740, and only a single dB or one dB at uh, one and a half K. And to me, it makes it a lot better, at least in solo. Now it's a different story when we put it into the mix, but we'll get there. Uh, the other thing. Uh, that I noticed is that there's a little bit of thumping happening in, uh, during the palm mutes that might be a little too much um, when the actual drums are, when it's mixed with the drums and the bass and everything else. So what a lot of people will do is they'll grab a compressor, right? Because a compressor will lower your loud sounds and raise your, your, and raise your low sounds. And for heavy stuff, I prefer to, to not do that. I prefer to use a multiband compressor. So I'm compressing the guitar, but only the range that's problematic. It's just a personal preference. I remember reading about it on the Andy Sneap forum a long time ago that he did that. And uh, I tried it back then. I mean, I've just been doing it ever since, at least for heavy stuff. If I want some color, I want some, if I want to hear the compression, obviously I'll go for like an 1176 or, or something like that. Uh, but for metal, I don't know. I kind of just prefer to just compress the, those low mids. So let's do that on, on the, on the submix. Okay. So move our EQ there. Let's go with our. Old friend C4. Okay, so I'm gonna bypass all the bands that I don't need. So the low band, upper mid band, and high band. And I'm gonna drag this down to, I don't know. Let's go, uh, that looks good. 200 hertz, and let's go to like, I don't know, around there, okay. So I'm gonna play the track. <laughs> Seems to work. It's grabbing the palm mutes. It's not overly audible, but I have a feeling that's gonna work in cases when the toms are hitting and the kick is hitting. The guitars aren't gonna be fighting in that in that range. You know, it still sounds nice and, and meaty, but it's not, it's not, it's not making the levels jump, you know? Okay, so from here, what I like to do is I'll take my sub, my sub mix, my guitar sub mix, and really drag it down to where it's almost inaudible, and I'll play it in context with the mix. And that'll kind of reveal to me if it needs anything else. So let's see here. Unmute. Okay, I'm going to play it. And I'm going to bring it up slowly to where it sits just about right. And then we're going to see how it's working. Um, 
to my ears, maybe a little bit of brightening, maybe a, a touch of 8K. Uh, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like it's shrill. It doesn't sound like it's muddy. I don't know. It kind of, kind of just works. And uh, just with those few tweaks that we did. So what I like to do here, if it's just a little touch of, you know, like a broad stroke kind of thing that it needs, I'll grab like a color EQ. Uh, what I mean by color EQ, something that's kind of model after an analog hardware unit or something. If I'm at a studio that has nice, you know, outboard stuff, I'll route it through and print it back into Pro Tools. But here we're, we're completely in the box. So I'm going to go with, I don't know, um, the SSL. I like that one. Okay, so let's play the track. Let me go to... To the frequency I mentioned before, I don't know, 7K. And I'm just gonna make the band a little wider. Let's play it. DB sounds about right. Anything more than that starts to get a little too sizzly for my taste, at least with, with this song. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can do this with a stock plugin. It doesn't really matter. I could have probably done this with the Digi and would have sounded exactly the same. It's just these have pretty knobs and make you feel more, I don't know, important or something. So no, for me, it's just a more of a creative type of EQ because you're just seeing the knob. You're not looking at the actual uh, frequency spectrum. So it, it, it kind of works in these cases. So yeah, let's hear our guitars in total for that whole passage and uh, let's see how it's working. There it is. For this particular song, that's all it needed. Um, now, this is by no means the end all be all approach. There are tons of different approaches out there. Everyone's got their own style. Uh, this is what works for me, and I know it works well for others. I've seen a lot of other producers or, or, or heard them say similar, similar things to, the, to what works for me, you know? Um, I know some people like to blend a lot of amps together. Some guys will do crazy EQ moves like take an SSL and boost, you know, 15 dB at, at 6K and that seems to work for them. For me, I don't know. It's always sounded like, like shit <laughs> when I do it. So I like getting it right at the source. Um, so hopefully this helps you out. Uh, it'll hopefully it helps you pay more attention to the source sounds you're working with and, and getting it right at the get go. Um, and if it's, if it's been helpful to you, you know, uh, throw me a like, subscribe, comment, and um, until next time, happy mixing.